Good morning. Okay, we're going to have feedback again this morning. What do I do about that? It says, uh, uh, welcome to Inquisition Update, by the way. My name's Tom Fresh, your host, and uh, you're listening to FirstAmendmentRadio.com. I'm getting some feedback from the station or someplace. Anyway, uh, I would like to continue our reading and discussion of the book, The Footprints of the Jesuits by R.W. Thompson. Backing up one one paragraph for continuity purposes this morning. Uh, beginning halfway down the page on page 393, it requires but little, excuse me, rather, it requires but, I'm still getting some feedback from the station. It makes it very, very, very difficult to concentrate. Um, um, I wish I could. Uh, it sounds like a, a microphone or something is open at the station. Okay, let me try it again. It requires but limited intelligence to see that the Jesuits alone and not the church would gain if the principles and policy of Pope Leo the Thirteenth should become established. Well, first of all, we have to realize that the principles and policies of Pope Leo XIII came from the Jesuits. He was trained from, I believe, something like the age of eight years old in, in Jesuit education. All of his life he was Jesuit trained. The Jesuits gave him his papacy. The Jesuits gave him his mind. The Jesuits gave him his infallibility, and the Jesuits gave him his divine right to rule as the vicar of Christ, the monarch of the world. The Jesuits gave him his love for the monarchies that served the papacy. He was handmade by the Jesuits. It was as if there were a Jesuit sitting on the papal throne when Pope Leo XIII was inaugurated Pope. And obviously, since Pope Leo XIII was an automaton of the Jesuits, certainly the Jesuits would benefit if all the policies and principles of Pope Leo XIII were established. And this brings to recollection the earlier discussion by R.W. Thompson in this book that when Ignatius Loyola created the Jesuit order, he met, he, he insisted that every Jesuit swear his oath to the Jesuit superior and his allegiance to the Jesuit superior and his obedience to the Jesuit superior, that every thought, will, and deed of a Jesuit should be that of the Jesuit superior, the, the superior general of the Jesuit order, the black pope and that they had no real allegiance to the white pope at all. They weren't to answer to him. They were to answer only to the Jesuit general. And they were to see in the Jesuit general the voice of God on earth. So from the very beginning, the Jesuits have been a rival society pitted against the, the so-called supreme pontiff, the white pope. And so long as the white popes were were uh, cooperative with the Jesuit order, there was harmony. And the moment there was a difference, the Jesuits would attack the white pope and kill and assassinate popes. Their history is littered with the assassination of popes. And Pope Leo the Thirteenth, if he knew anything, he knew that he'd be toast if he if he defied the Jesuit order. Now it says they, speaking of the Jesuits, would see in such a result cause for rejoicing that the work of their society, the Jesuit order, had been so well done when the youthful and plastic mind of Cardinal Pecci, before he became Pope, Leo XIII, had their doctrine so indelibly stamped upon it that now, when he has become Pope in his old age, 
He seems to keep himself alive by the stimulating hope of successfully employing the Jesuits to arrest modern progress, to arrest Protestant progress and civilization, and turn the nations back, quote, to the old paths, unquote. That is, to turn the nations back to the old world order. Global monarchisms uh, headed up by the papacy. To put the Pope back on his temporal so, uh, uh, throne as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now the Jesuits already exhibit signs of exaltation arising manifestly out of the belief that the pontifical favor and patronage bestowed upon them has caused the world to forget their history. That the pontifical blessing upon the Jesuit order has forced the world to forget the diabolical history of the Jesuits how they endeavored to fix disrepute upon the Roman Catholic Church by their conduct in India, China, and Paraguay. Remember what they did in Paraguay. They opposed the Jesuit or or the, the, the white pope. They wouldn't obey any of the white pope's laws. They set up their own little nation down there in Paraguay. It was a Jesuit monopoly. China, they pretended to be uh, monks of the Chinese religion. They did the same thing in India. And all the other Roman Catholic uh, monastic orders who witnessed the behavior of the Jesuits simply said they're not teaching Roman Catholicism. They're becoming, uh, they're, 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 they're acting like the religious <coughs> leaders of the uh, the Chinese faith or the Indian faith. They are apostate, and they should be reined in by the papacy. <clears throat> he says, how they endeavored to fix disrepute upon the Roman Catholic Church by their conduct in India, China, Paraguay, and elsewhere. How they disobeyed the preemptory commands of some popes and endeavored to degrade and to humiliate others. How they were compelled to obedience only by the severest methods of reproof. How they were expelled from every Roman Catholic country in Europe and from Rome itself by Pope Pius IX during his last years of his pontificate. How they were suppressed and abolished by one of the best popes for crimes that could not be condoned how they abused and vilified his name and memory in order to justify their refusal to obey the authoritative commands of the Roman Catholic Church, and how their revival was excused alone upon the ground that they were better fitted than any other body of men in the world by habit, education, and training to become warriors in the cause of political absolutism or rather, restoring political absolutism after political absolutism had been destroyed by the Protestant Reformation. <clears throat> One has to wonder why, why the Jesuits are so lauded in the Roman Catholic Church, given their history. Because the papacy recognizes that the bark of Peter cannot propel itself without the Jesuits. And that love-hate relationship between the papacy, the white pope, and the black pope has to continue because the white pope simply cannot advance himself to global monarchy without the Jesuits' help. So they tolerate all this insolence. They tolerate the papal assassinations. They tolerate the apparent and glaring apostasy of of the Jesuits. They can feign any religion they want, infiltrate any religion and all religions with impunity. They don't have to be Catholic. They just have to 
elevate the papacy and to conquer all the governments of the world to make them subservient to the papal power. So it's a marriage of convenience. It's not a marriage of love. And what we see today, in my view, represents a hostile takeover of the Jesuits of the so-called chair of Peter in Rome. The condition of the world is now such that the Jesuits can promote themselves to the position that they have always coveted, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. It should shock many Roman Catholics, especially those who are aware of Jesuit history. It should shock and horrify Roman Catholics to realize that there's a Jesuit in the papal chair. But remember, just like R.W. Thompson said, the papacy so lauded the Jesuit order that the world has forgotten their diabolical history. But I'm not going to let my listeners forget My listeners need to know job number one. Job number one for the Jesuit order is to destroy Protestantism. Because Protestantism, that is the Bible, which is the power behind Protestantism, put the papacy in universal disrepute, calling him Antichrist. It nearly destroyed the papacy. The papacy had no more temporal power. Not just in Protestant countries, but even Roman Catholic countries, as we've enumerated in this book. Even Italy itself, Rome itself, threw off the temporal yoke of the papacy and decided that they would govern themselves in civil matters. And the, and the Jesuits, simply created this holy alliance using all the the ancient monarchical families so loyal to the papacy, those who had been unseated from power during the Protestant Reformation and replaced with elected governments, they wanted their jobs back. They wanted their power back. They wanted their wealth and privilege back. So did the Pope. And so did the Jesuits. So they created the Holy Alliance and began to exert force on those nations that that separated church and state, that, that rejected the temporal power of the Pope. And now we have the white Pope, Pope Leo XIII, standing before the world and saying, the Protestant Reformation is unjust. I am the divine right ruler of the world. My title is the Vicar of Christ, the replacement of the Son of God on earth. I am King of kings and Lord of lords. And it is your moral, religious responsibility. It is a salvific issue, if you are a Roman Catholic, to help restore the papacy. All those countries where he had been dismissed, and to elevate the papacy to monarchical control in places where he had never had power before. All you Catholics around the world need to form yourselves into a global religio-political party to reestablish the temporal power of the Pope, the spiritual power of the Pope, and all the powers of the Pope as a matter of religious faith and dogma. So stop and think a minute. What was, what form and shape did this so-called religio-political party take after the Pope commanded that all Catholics unite to restore his power around the world? What form did it uh, take? How does it manifest itself in the United States and the world today? Well, Many people would say, and correctly, that the Jesuit order is the head of this religio-political power. Many researchers would suggest that the Knights of Malta 
form one of the biggest and most powerful members of this religio-political party created by the Jesuits. Some would even include the Knights of Columbus, and certainly they would be correct. Some would include the Catholic League. Certainly, they too are correct. How about all the monastic orders and all the sodalities, all the little secret societies of the Roman Catholic Church? They too would be a part of this gigantic global religio-political party, influencing politics in every level, all the way down to your city administrator, your county government even your school board. But I've discovered the largest and most powerful, most numerous group in this religio-political party created by the Jesuits. And it dwarfs all others. It's called Vatican Council II and Ecumenism. When the papacy and the Jesuits finally convinced the most powerful and influential Protestant leaders of this country that the Protestant reformers were wrong, the Pope is not the biblical, historical, and prophetic Antichrist as every single Protestant reformer insisted was true which overturned the temporal power and, and, and overturned the chair of Peter and liberated all of Europe, liberated the United States of America and isolated it from papal influence. All that belief that the Pope was the Antichrist, that was wrong. Because... Now all Protestants believe Antichrist is in the long-distant future. So, the Protestant Reformation was a diabolical attack upon the legitimate throne of Almighty God on the earth, the papacy. That Roman Catholic, Roman Catholicism is the mother church, the true church of Jesus Christ. And all the, the harlot daughters are in error. And not only are they in error, they are in grievous error. And to do it must help to restore the temporal power of the Pope the rightful throne of Jesus Christ on the earth. They must restore that throne by force if necessary. They must form themselves together with pre-existing Roman Catholic religio-political parties and form a gigantic religio-political, a global gigantic religio-political party to restore the, the papacy and to create a new world order. The greatest, the single greatest, most, Im most important, most powerful Religio-political force now was that created by Vatican Council II after the pro shamely denounced the Protestant Reformation. We were wrong, Holy Father. You are not the Antichrist. We now know through Jesuit instruction in the seminaries, that he who is to cause the sacrifices and oblations to cease in Israel, after the Jews begin to make animal sacrifices and eat and, di and drink damnation to themselves, whoever causes those sacrifices and oblations to cease, he will be the Antichrist. 
and you are exonerated, Holy Father. And we owe it to God, we owe it to Jesus Christ, to acknowledge you, Holy Father, as the Holy Father. And submit ourselves to your spiritual and temporal power, Holy Father. To bow at your feet and kiss your ring, Holy Father. To get control of the government, the heretical government of this country that was once of, by, and for the people and make it a government of, by, and for the Holy Father. Gigantic religious political power to restore the temporal and spiritual power of the Pope over the whole globe advanced and had its genesis at Vatican Council II, led by the most famous, the most powerful, the most beloved names in Protestantism. If I named them, I'd offend most of my listeners, because you love them all, just as I did. But they were deceived by futurism, dispensational futurism, a creation of the Jesuits. After all, it was their assignment to destroy Protestantism. The only way to do that is through destroying the meaning of the Scriptures, because the Scripture were, is the basis for, for, for Protestantism. It was the Bible that liberated all of Europe. Surely the Jesuits realized that they had no influence over the Protestants unless they could twist the Scriptures like their master Satan does. So they simply searched throughout the Scriptures to find the key that would unlock the yellow brick road back to Rome for the Protestants. You know what they found? Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. All they had to do was to change the identity of the he spoken of in that verse from Christ to Antichrist. And he shall cause the sacrifices and oblations to cease. And for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even unto the consummation. And that, determined, will be poured out upon the desolate. They say that's not Jesus being spoken of there. They say it's some future Antichrist that'll come in the 70th week of Daniel, which Christ alone perfectly and completely fulfilled in the 70th week of Daniel 2,000 years ago. All they had to do was change the identity of that he in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, and convince the Protestant world that Antichrist would come in the future. That exonerated the papacy, and the papacy demands, see there, you all believe this. You were wrong. The Pope is not. The papacy is not the Antichrist. You must repent, and you must do penance. You must help to conquer the the world for the Pope. You must restore the Pope's temporal power all over the globe. You, America, Protestant America, must lead the charge. And they are. We'll be back right after this.
100 days, 100 subscribers at $7 will bring FirstAmendmentRadio.com to the minimum level necessary to sustain it through 2015. Go to support.firstamendmentradio.com. $7 a month. Really, you can afford that for our Protestant First Amendment rights and the gospel of the kingdom message. Where your heart is, there will your treasure be also. Go to support. Support.firstamendmentradio.com I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Have you seen the Left Behind movies? Have you read the Left Behind fictional book series? Not everyone believes Left Behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin because they see the world stage shaping to fulfill what they have been led to believe is sound biblical interpretation a left behind rapture scenario This false view of prophecy is reinforced in the mind, not only of its adherents, but also includes those who have been merely exposed to the specific media. Is it possible that false prophecy can be fulfilled? The rapture theories have always been in dispute. Pre-trib, mid-trib, and post-trib disputes have risen up in exclusively evangelical circles of recent history so that when true believers don't suddenly disappear, this element will easily go by the wayside when all see a new Jewish temple begin to be built. Will this be part of the great delusion that will come upon the whole earth? It seems that this great prophetic delusion has already overcome practically the entire American evangelical and Christian world. Get the book. The rapture will be canceled. To learn more, visit CrossTheBorder.org. That's C-R-O-S-S, CrossTheBorder.org. Record budget deficits, bankruptcies galore, and the U.S. dollar is at an all-time low. With today's gloomy economic outlook, safe investments are often hard to find. For over a decade, Melody Cedarstrom at Discount Gold and Silver Trading Company has been helping people secure their future by investing in the precious metals. Melody has the honesty, integrity, and experience that is often lacking in the precious metals business. Let her put it to work for you. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 800-375-4188. That's 800-375-4188. The program you are listening to is 100% sponsored by you, the listener, on this First Amendment Rights Media channel. You will notice that there are few commercials on this radio network. There's a good reason for that. Corporate advertising dollars come with strings that limit program content. So without your help, these programs cannot continue on Internet or our several affiliates. If you benefit by the educational law programs, we ask you to give. If you are admonished or nurtured by the Bible and ministry programs, we ask you to give. If some voice a cause that you are passionate about, we ask you to give. If you believe in any of these, we ask you to support them as you would a missionary on a continual basis, as if giving a tithe for missionary radio. These programs are not commercially viable and must be supported by those faithful to the cause of truth. Look for the button to sponsor your favorite programs at our Listen and Schedule pages on the Internet. Then, when you subscribe, we will send you the last quarterly MP3 CD of that program immediately and continue to do so with each new quarter. We will also give you unlimited archive access to all of our programs. We're asking you to give much less than a tithe so that you may also send support directly to a particular program host cause and anywhere else the spirit may lead you do all to the glory of our god and creator for his holy nation the only kingdom that will last forever thank you for listening
Welcome back from the break. You're listening to the second half hour of Inquisition Update on FirstAmendmentRadio.com. R.W. Thompson was absolutely correct. Here's what he said. Their revival, the revival of the Jesuit order, was excused alone upon the ground that they, the Jesuits, were better fitted than any other body of men in the world by habit, by education, and by training to become the warriors, the single combat warriors for the cause of political absolutism, for restoring political and spiritual and monarchical and papal absolutism all over the world, first by destroying the Protestant Reformation. And they did it with dispensational futurism, simply by changing the identity of the he spoken of in Daniel chapter 9, verse 27. And I reiterate something I said before on previous broadcast. It was because the Jews had also been misled and misinformed by their religious leaders about Daniel's 70-week prophecy. And because they were misled and confused by their religious leaders about the interpretation of Daniel's 70-week prophecy, they knew not the time of their visitation. Had they known Daniel's prophecy, had they understood Daniel's prophecy, they'd have all been waiting for their Messiah they would have instantly recognized him as being born of a virgin, just like prophesied in the Scripture. That he would do miracles. And then they would also realize that he would be killed for their salvation. That he would bear on his body their sins. and redeem them to God, reconcile them to God, and that they would be then members of a new kingdom, a heavenly kingdom. But they knew not the time of their visitation because they didn't understand Daniel's 70-week prophecy. They were confused about it. Somebody confused the issue. And it was the religious leaders of their day. Oh, now granted, there were some who despised the religious leaders of their day. They knew they were hypocrites. That they were not what they seemed. Pious, powerful, in league with Rome. Certainly, they could not be correct. And some of them took upon themselves to read the Scriptures for themselves and came to the right conclusions. Even Simeon was waiting on the steps of the temple when Mary came to have Jesus uh, circumcised on the eighth day of his birth. Simeon knew by the revelation of the Holy Spirit. Now, how do you suppose the Holy Spirit got to Simeon? Well, I can tell you. He opened up the book for himself and read Daniel's prophecy, and the Holy Spirit told him, Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and thy holy city. The Messiah comes at the end of the 69th week. And he'll be the great high priest of Messiah of, of, of Jerusalem. Messiah. Now, Simeon must have also known that the law required that they be a priest to be about the age of 30 years old. So he simply had to do the math. He had to figure out when the decree came forth to restore to rebuild Jerusalem, count 69 weeks, and minus 30, he would know when he was born, when he would be born in the world 30 years later. He would be the age of a priest. Simple math. And there he was, waiting for 
the Messiah. To come to be circumcised on the eighth day of his life, according to the law. Simeon knew the very day that Jesus would be circumcised. And he was simply waiting. He knew the time of his visitation. He said, my, mine eyes have seen the salvation of Israel. What happened to the rest of them? Yeah, they knew that Messiah was coming. But they were confused. They weren't sure. Now, I'm not a date setter. I'm not telling you that we are to know the time of Christ's return, the second advent, as they are, as it is called. But God left absolutely no excuse not to know the very day Jesus would come to the temple to be circumcised. Nor that about the 30th year he would become the priest of Israel to make atonement for the sins, to bring an end of sins, to set up an everlasting righteous kingdom, to proclaim himself King of kings and Lord of lords. He did that. but they just weren't sure. And they ended up crucifying him. Or rather, the religious leaders of his day crucified him. They rejected their lamb. They rejected their Messiah. They slew him wickedly, giving him over to the hands of the Romans. betrayed him to the Romans. But he came for that purpose, to be betrayed by his own people, wounded in the house of his friends for your benefit and mine. but we face the same problem today. Somebody has confused us. Our religious leaders have taken the role of the Sadducees and the Pharisees, and they've confused us about Daniel's 70-week prophecy. And it's not a matter of knowing the time of our visitation. It's all about now. Okay, we lost my connection and restored. My apologies to my listeners. We're constantly having these technical problems. But look, I want my listeners to realize that this Jesuit lie called dispensational futurism, this idea that the Pope is not is not the biblical, historical, and prophetic Antichrist, and that Antichrist is some future figure who will cause the sacrifices and oblations to cease after he reneges on some seven-year treaty he makes with the Jews. It's the foundation of the New World Order. It's the motivation, the engine, the fuel of the counter-reformation. Just as was the knowledge that the papacy was the Antichrist, was the fuel of the Protestant Reformation. This idea that the Pope is now exonerated, the papacy is now exonerated, and some future Antichrist is now, has the onus of Antichrist, and, and, the Protestant Reformation was an error, that is the very foundation, not only of the Jesuit-led counter-reformation to destroy Protestantism, but it is also the foundation 
of the new world order. You see, because if all of Christianity believes that the Pope is the rightful replacement of the Son of God on earth, the Vicar of Christ, as he is called, they have a religio-political mandate all over the world. Catholics and Protestants, evangelicals, call them whatever you will, all over the world are is a power that dwarfs anything that existed in, in, in history. And what it's going to end up is uh, the New World Order. And it could end tomorrow. All of it could end tomorrow without firing a shot. If everybody understood how the Jesuits twisted Daniel chapter 9, verse 27, and changed the identity of the he spoken of from Christ to Antichrist, if we restore the knowledge that all Protestants had prior to about three generations ago, that the he spoken of there is none other than Jesus Christ himself, who caused the sacrifices and oblations to cease when he gave up his own life, then the counter-reformation would be over. The Jesuits would be exposed as liars and deceivers. The papacy would be restored to the throne of Antichrist. And the whole world, again, would walk away from the papacy like they did 500 years ago at the Protestant Reformation. We'd have a global Protestant Reformation. As a matter of fact, I believe many Catholics would renounce Roman Catholicism and become Protestant. Then these global crusades, these global papal proxy wars that we've been waging with our own money, driving this country to destitution, would end. They would all end. And what would become the object of Christianity at that point from the United States of America would be to evangelize and to liberate the whole world, just as we did at the Protestant Reformation. But the religious leaders of our day are just as apostate, just as deceived, as were the Sadducees and the Pharisees and the religious leaders of Jesus' day who had confused the people about the meaning and the timing of Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 27, the 70 weeks of Daniel. They knew not the time of their visitation because of the influence of their religious leaders. And we today are confused about the identity of Antichrist because of that same confusion about Daniel's 70-week prophecy. And if we ever get a grip, if Christians ever get a grip on the truth about Daniel's 70-week prophecy, they will realize that Jesus fulfilled all 70 weeks perfectly and completely 2,000 years ago. There is no seven years of great tribulation. There's only continued tribulation and persecution of God's saints, only to be escalated when it is finally understood that futurism is a diabolical lie, and the Jesuits pull out all the stops to destroy every dissenting voice, even if it takes n global nuclear annihilation. I don't believe the Jesuits would leave one man standing in this world if it was apparent that the Protestants were smarter than them and knew the truth about Daniel 9 and how they twisted it and the consequences of that lie. I don't think the Jesuits would hesitate to destroy this entire world. But I don't believe God. I don't believe my Messiah, Jesus Christ the righteous, Jesus Christ the Savior, 
the one who caused the sacrifices and oblations to cease. I don't believe he'd allow that to happen. You know, they always told me in the churches that if the Jews would have just accepted Jesus Christ as their propitiation, as their King of kings and Lord of lords, Jesus would have set up the kingdom right then and there. Jesus did set up the kingdom right then and there. They're following the Jesuit lie that the kingdom of Christ is somehow also in the future, that it's not manifest in the world today. It's a diabolical lie. The people, the, the, the scriptures say repeatedly, speaking about the kingdom of Christ. And people were added to the kingdom of Christ daily. The doors have been wide open for 2,000 years. Why do we wait for a kingdom that's already a here? Why do we wait for a Savior that's already here? Why do we wait for a liberation that is already here? Somebody has confused us about Daniel's 70 weeks. Somebody has confused God's people. Who's in charge of confusing God's people? Satan himself, the great deceiver, and his emissaries, the Jesuits. This book, Footprints of the Jesuits by R.W. Thompson, is a very, 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 very good book. It should be read in every Christian church, both Protestant and Catholic in this country. And then maybe they would become true Christians. That's true ecumenism. They would all divorce themselves from the whore of Rome that they've been all wedded to post-Vatican Council II. They would leave the harlot. Leave the witch to defend herself. Leave the witch to fight her own papal proxy wars. What a day, what a glorious day it would be if God's people would all realize on the same day how they have been deceived about Daniel's 70-week prophecy. What a day for the kingdom of Christ. Catholic and Protestant alike would walk away from what we know today as Christianity. And it would be called Messianity. Messianity. What about that name? The Vatican and the ecumenical evangelicals together have destroyed the name Christianity. They've turned it to mean something completely different. You know, I've I've only just now reached where we left off yesterday. This is this is startling information. The Jesuits are flattered. They've conquered Protestantism. Only because Protestantism simply surrendered to a lie. The words of Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 27, are so simple, so plain, so unconfusing, 
that it is a marvel that the Jesuits could deceive anybody about its meaning and its fulfillment in Christ 2,000 years ago. But they did it, and it, it could only be attributed to the spiritual weakness of Protestantism. You know, we loved our liberty and our affluence and our wealth too much. We became patriotic to the United States to a fault. We simply left our guard, thinking that we had no enemy in the world. That Antichrist, obviously, won't come until the last seven years of time. He's not here now, so we really don't have anything to worry about besides that. Before he shows up in the world, we're going to be raptured out of here. What an ingenious, what a diabolical twisting of the truth. And they're so engaged in this new nation state of Israel and the, and the, the hope of a Jewish temple and that the Jews may begin animal sacrifices again, never realizing that they will eat and drink damnation to themselves, demonstrating once again that they don't accept Jesus as their lamb. Christianity is looking forward to that day when the Jews eat and drink damnation to themselves. And only because we don't understand Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 27. It's a hideous reality. It's like tripping a monster with a toothpick. Unbelievable. I'm going to try to regather myself over the weekend so I can come back and do the show. I hope my listeners will pray for me. I'll see you Monday on Inquisition Update. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. That's crosstheborder.org. I know you all want answers, and believe me, so do I, and I'll do my best to get them. Despite Nicolas Cage's promise to do his best to get left behind rapture answers for us, don't hold your breath. Not everyone believes left behind is true prophecy. Some may even regard as conspiratorial the mainstream re-release of the Left Behind movie with actor Nicolas Cage portraying the main character as an attempt to further reinforce in the minds of all this perception of false prophecy in order to condition the masses for the play about to begin. If you want true Bible prophecy answers, get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. The author exposes the Latin rapture origin, the seven-year tribulation deception, true Bible revelation of Daniel's 70 weeks, the abomination of desolation, the restrainer, America in the revelation, the image of the beast, and the mark of the beast, and the truth about God's chosen people, and so much more about Bible prophecy. This book will shatter the left behind paradigm of future events. Get the book, The Rapture Will Be Canceled. Visit crosstheborder.org, C-R-O-S-S, crosstheborder.org, to get your print, EPUB, or PDF version of the book, the rapture will be canceled. That's crossthe-border.org.